Okay, here's the deal. The wood shop is not done yet. I got a good deal of work left, but there's a project that I need to get done right now before I can finish all that, and that is make a stand for this mini split. I've got a decent set of drawings right here, but the problem is I just have temporary electricity over there and I'm gonna need to run an extension over here so I can work on this. It's a real simple project. All I gotta do is cut this four by four in half and then there's some arms and a top and this and that, but I do wanna drill the holes. The drill press is back there. I'm gonna pull that out, but I need to make an extension cord to get me from the outlet there over to here somewhere. So, I don't know, maybe 20 foot. So I went across to the machine shed and dug this stuff up. What I'll do is grab some Romex put this all together, make myself an extension cord, and I'll be right with you. Okay, about 20 minutes later and I have a 15 amp 220 extension cord, temporary extension cord, all ready to go. Just get this plugged in and let's get this mess cleaned up and pull that drill press out. Okay. I tossed all this insulation back here for that birthday party we had and now it's a little bit in the way. It shouldn't be too bad though. That's the first time that this has been run since we've lived here. This was in a container for, oh, about six years, and then it's been in the machine shed for the last five years. I didn't have any 220 outlets until, oh, about two years ago, but then I started working on this and just never got to it. I should have checked under the hood before I turned it on, though, because... You can see this stuff right here. A mouse had made a nest in here. Yeah, I guess they could come in right through there. So I'm gonna have to vacuum this stuff up, but I don't think they did any damage. It ran just fine. All right, let me clean that up and we'll get back to it. All right, that was a fair amount of work for four holes, but I really needed this going anyway, so not a big deal. I have four holes going through the four by fours, two on each side, 
And because that's three and a half inches thick, if you hand drill those, they're not gonna go straight through. And once you start bolting everything together, it's all just gonna skew. So let's get these legs cut in half and we'll mark out these holes and get them drilled. These chop saws are just filthy, so I'm doing all of my cutting outside. All right, my four by four is gonna be a little over eight feet. Not sure how long it'll be. Ooh, just barely. So, if we go right at four feet and cut to this side, that'll be half. It really doesn't matter how accurate this is because the bottoms of these will be buried in a hole in concrete. So right about there and we're good to go. I'm using 3 8 inch bolts, so I'm going to drill the holes at 25 30 seconds, which is a clearance hole. I would normally use my combination square to do the layout, but I can't find it. All right, so all right, so what I'm doing is going an inch in and an inch down or up. So that would put me inch over and inch down, puts one hole right there. And then an inch up from the bottom would put me at two and a half, which is where that's at. And that would put the other one right there. So, got a hole here and a hole there. This is southern yellow pine, so there might be a little bit of drift when I'm doing the drilling. And I don't have an extension table for this long board, so I'm going to have to balance it on the drill press. But everything should work out in the end. And again, one inch down from the top, one inch over from the side, and it's the same one inch up, one inch over. And the reason they're not both in the center is because that'll likely split the wood, and I don't want that. three inches into the wood. They're not going all the way through. I'll drill that a little bit later. One last thing on these. These are going to get attached to some cross arms. This is a cross arm right here. And where it's attached, it's going to be a two by four, treated two by four. But where that's attached can trap water. So what I'm going to do in both of these areas is do a little bit of extra treatment with some copper coat. I'll show you that in a little bit once we get the arms cut. Well, I thought I had some treated 2x4s laying around, but this stuff is for the sole plates for the shop here, so I can't use that, but I do have this. Let me double check on the width on this. Okay. It is a two by 10 treated, so I can get two of them out of the width. Not really sure what I made out of this before, but got a circle cut out of here. Let me just cut this to rough width, split that in half, which means I'm gonna have to clear off the saw and roll that over there as well. Uh, this is turning out to be a bigger project than I thought. All right, let's get those cut.
yeah, this light in here is terrible. So what I did is find the middle and these are 13 and a half or 13 and 7 eighths inch long. So that's 6 and 15 sixteenths. And then I just go an inch and three quarters each way from that. That will give me my connection point. And I'm just marking this so that I can put some of that copper coat on this. Doesn't matter if this is real accurate because I'm gonna slop that stuff on. And again, that's gonna be a joint that's exposed to the weather. And if water gets trapped between the leg and these cross arms, it's just a perfect place for rot. It's real easy to slap on a little bit of that copper coat and not have to worry about it. I forgot to clip these corners. Do that real quick. Just gonna measure up an inch on either end. Got to be very careful with this stuff. It can cause blindness if you get it splashed into your eyes. So wear eye protection. And I'm only getting the areas that I can't get later on. I'm going to put this stuff on the majority of the top later on. Now for the legs. All right, I'm gonna assemble these on the table saw top, but they're still a little wet. So I'm gonna let these dry off for a bit and then we'll come back and get them assembled. Okay, this stuff is dry now. So what I do, got a nice flat tabletop. Stand this leg on end, and I made that line a little darker. We want these cut sides up. They will be down in the end, and then just align that with the pencil mark. Then we'll take a little clamp and Try to clamp this as close to the center as possible while still leaving access to that lower hole. Now everything is all nice and flat and all lined up. Now we turn this to this edge and we use the same drill bit that we used to drill this hole in the first place. And I drill as far as I can through here. This drill bit isn't quite big enough to make it all the way through. So I have a good start. I don't even need to put this on the drill press. I can just drill this through. Now, We'll grab the hardware. Okay, lock washer, then a regular washer. And then on the back side here, this just gets a washer and a nut. And I'll snug that up a little bit just by hand. Make sure everything's still nice and tight down on the table. 
and then drill the other hole. It's kind of a pain in the butt that this drill bit is not long enough to go all the way through, but it is what it is. And all of this hardware is galvanized, hot dip galvanized. Okay, lock washer, washer. You can see that this is dead perfect. It's flush as can be. Same thing on this one. And if I would have did it any different, it would not be like that. All right, now I'm gonna go get these painted with copper coat. That is the leg here and these cross arms. Now the only two parts that are left are the two top pieces. So let's get the copper coat on these and then go get the tops cut. And again, the reason I'm putting the copper coat on this now is because this is going to be covered up in the next step, so won't be able to after this. And I want it coated and have a little bit of time to dry. It doesn't have to dry all the way. This is by far the most critical area to get coated because it will be face up into the elements and water will make its way down to it and sit there. With this copper coat on here, this will have many more years of active life. This is great stuff. All right, that should do it. Now we'll do the other one. All right, I puddled some on the top and it's soaking in pretty good. I'm gonna let these dry for a bit and we'll go get them top parts cut. two and three quarters. All right, we have holes at an inch and three quarters in from either end. And then we'll double check that dimension because it needs to be 19 and a quarter between them, and it is. I wish I had my combination square, but I have no idea where it is. Let's make this line a little better. All right, now it's one and seven sixteenths in this direction. I chucked up that 2564 bit back into the drill press 
and 25 64ths is a tight clearance hole for a 3 8 inch bolt. Get that a little bit closer, align it with the hole, tighten it back up, and I really should center punch these. Now, I could not find the center punch right off hand, and I don't want to look all day, so I should be able to center it pretty good. Continue this line all the way across and we will go one and a half and then what we're at four and a quarter so two and an eighth. These are for regular screws. Okay, now for the assembly. We have the big hole towards the outside and we're a half inch in this way and an inch in that way. Let me see if I can show you that. One inch on the end and a half inch on the outside. Now what I have to do is get one screw in from the bottom here then readjust it and get the second screw in, then I can do this side. All right, I flipped it over and I have some screws for spacers, get my end nice and flush. All right. Now I can screw down this side. Okay, she's all assembled. Now I'm gonna paint the rest of this with the copper coat and make sure I get the end grain real good, the end grain and the holes. The screws I used on this are stainless steel, so they're just fine. And what else? Oh, the reason for the legs, these are getting buried in the ground. It's gonna have about 12 inches out of the ground and I have it going Oh, it's going to be roughly three feet into the ground, and the reason for that is I don't want it heaving. It might heave if it got super, super cold, 
just a little bit and that's not going to matter at all because this has flexible pipe and stuff coming to it so it's going to be fine either way. The reason I'm not putting this unit on just concrete pads is that the ground in the back of our house it goes a little bit out and then it starts going downhill. This thing is going to be mounted on an angled chunk of ground and if I wanted to put this on like a concrete pad I would have to level out a big area and that would compromise the frost line on the house. This is the perfect solution. So this thing is going to be held on by lag screws so they're going to be 3 8 inch as well. This is a 2564 hole right here so that's a clearance hole for a 3 8 inch lag and the hole I'm going to drill down into here will be a 5 16 inch hole so that it's tight. Let me show you this unit. What I'll do, these are the anti-vibration pads. I'll put the screws into the board and I'll have them loose and then I'll just push the unit back onto the screws and tighten them down lightly. Then on this front, those are going to be a little more difficult. I have to take off the screen to get that one on, but roughly it's the same. The anti-vibration pads underneath and a lag screw through the hole with a nice size washer and this thing will be super secure and it can vibrate all at once. It's not going to transfer any of the vibrations to the house. All right, there you have it. One mini split stand.